I believe we're here. Hola, mis amores. How is your spirit today? Let's do a vibe check. Take a deep breath in. Feel into your heart and tell me how are you feeling? Drop a word for me in the comments below. First of all, how are you? How's your spirit today? So good to see you. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Jenori Ponsel, and I am a guiding light and spiritual teacher to intuitive leaders and icons that are prioritizing the inner peace, putting themselves first, being authentic, overflowing with inner peace, and enjoying their lives every step of the way. And today I'm excited because I have an icon. Like literally, this person is super fucking iconic. Like I cannot wait for y'all to bask in all the juiciness she has to share with you. So if you are someone that has been really looking at getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and doing that with joy, doing it with ease, you know, doing the thing that you tell your clients to do, that thing, well, this combo is for you because that's exactly what me and this person are going to talk about and the journey that it takes to do that. If you know already that you want what I'm serving, that you want to be a part of my world, I actually want to invite you right now to apply for an authenticity audit. These are 45-minute conversations that you and I are going to have. If you're going to take a look at where you are, why are you not prioritizing yourself? Why are you not leading with your joy? Why is inner peace not overflowing in your life? Let's take a look at that and let's get crystal clear on what it takes to impact those things in your life so that you can transform. And we are enrolling for 2024, so come get you some. Let's make this year one of your most authentic years ever because I already know it's going to be your year. That's how you move. You bring the energy. You bring the heat. So let me be a part of it. Come and join my world and let's go create some magic. So apply for one of those audits. Click on the link above this video so that you can come through. All right. Are y'all ready? Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a moment. Go get your water. Go get your journal. Get ready. Get ready. I'm going to give you a second for that because it's going to be that type of conversation today. It's going to be that type of conversation. I'm going to bring on this person right now. I am so excited for y'all to meet her and for you to share space with us. So without no further ado, the icon, the one and only, Cassandra Quinn. <laughs> Cassandra, how are you, my dear? It's so good to have you. Thank you. I am delighted to be here and have this conversation. I think that like I, I, I've seen it on my calendar and I've just been looking forward to spending this time with you and inviting people in on the conversation uh, yeah, that I think is really important for them to hear. I know. I'm so excited to have you too. Ooh, wait, do I hear an echo? Is that me? Um, hmm. I'm so excited to hear you too, because, to have you here too, because it is going to be a very powerful conversation. And you and I have had such a beautiful bond over the years. It's been years now. So I'm just really, really thrilled. So tell the people about who you are. Introduce them to the icon, please. Yeah. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. So, all right. So I'm Cassandra Quinn, and I exist in a world to help close gaps between people, between ideas, uh, between opportunities, and really help rejuvenate and uh, heal the world. And like that's the big picture, broad picture, no matter what I am doing in life, no matter what job I'm doing, like that is what I'm here to do. And the way that I'm serving in that way right now is that I am a fractional COO and a growth advisor for businesses. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fancy way of saying that I am a part-time contract leader who comes in and supports other leaders in helping stabilize and grow their business and give them the systems, resource, and people they need to grow and thrive. Mm. Love it. If you need to get your systems in order, you need to contact Cassandra because she lives, breathes this stuff. Like her brain, I was literally telling her this before we got on this call. Her brain is just programmed to like look at things and help identify how to make them better and do it in a way, express it in a way that's gentle and that is kind. I just love her. So if you're into that, listen, she's your person. Go holler at her, give her money. Okay. <laughs> Cassandra, let's jump into our journey together because I feel like there is so much joy in what you and I are going to share today. And it's going to really uplift the lives of people, especially because it's you and I, and we are both 
powerful leaders. So I know that whoever is watching this is going to be truly transformed by this conversation. So tell us a little bit about where were you, where was happening in your world when you were like, when you, when we started working together, like how did I enter your world and how do we start working together? Where were you? Yeah. So uh, we were, we met, I remember in another program where we had the same men business mentor who uh, was doing incredible mentorship around uh, the ways that we were showing up in the world and the ways that we were marketing and selling. And uh, it was a really uh, cool container of really other powerful, mostly women business owners, right? Um, and so I was, first of all, I will share sidebar when when I first joined that container, I was super intimidated and felt like I didn't belong there, that I was an imposter, mm -hmm. like all of these, or at least even if I wasn't an imposter, like I was like, I don't know, like that kid who uh, shows up, like that freshman and like mm -hmm. everybody else seniors like that kind of vibe <laughs> and so i might have belonged there but i was a freshman um and so like i remember just looking up to you and all of the other women in the community um and what i really admired in the way about you and what stood out about you is one you always showed up and asked for support and were open being your full self while you were doing it and that was something i had been working on um but i also have a lot of especially at that time even now uh perfectionism and fear of being judged and 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 recognizing how much of that working with you i'm jumping ahead was rooted in my judgment of self right mm -hmm. but i didn't see that at the time and one of the beautiful gifts that i got from our shared mentor was the idea that it's not about what we do it's who we be Mm -hmm. But where I was stuck, it was like, I don't know how to be. <laughs> <laughs> and like, of course, like, of course, everybody knows how to be. But there was just like, mm -hmm. how do we feel comfortable and own who we are and be comfortable mm -hmm. in who we are and trust who we are? And there were so many pieces of learned behavior that I was not even conscious of at the time about how and why I didn't trust myself. Mm. Um, and that, I think, I, I don't know if this is a, is a title that you use for yourself anymore, but I remember when I first came into your world um, as a like self-trust catalyst. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so even, even if it's not a title you use, it is, it is, a, uh, it is a piece of what you do. Um, and so I remember asking, it, it, it was a pivotal moment where it became very clear that different people enter our lives to support us in different ways. And that just like in a personal relationship, like you don't, you can't expect one person to be able to give you everything. Yeah. Um, and I realized that I needed additional support in this area. Mm -hmm. And you saw that and you reached out to me first as my friend and my colleague and was like, hey, do you want to have a conversation about this? I was like, yeah, please. <laughs> um, and then that's really how it unfolded. It was, I think that you saw in me the desire and me striving mm -hmm at this and feeling really stuck and so i already was reaching for it and just didn't know how to get there does that make sense absolutely absolutely yeah do you have more you want to share I, of course i always have more to say like, <laughs> the conversation. that's that's the thing about us like as leaders like we're constantly unpacking this type of stuff y'all so we be we always got we can talk for hours about this stuff and we usually do because <laughs> it is so like you know so real and i'm glad that you you talked about the imposter syndrome cassandra and being in the place and seeing people and and being like oh my god like y'all are y'all are doing things here okay like i'm i know i'm here but it, it is that energy of like i'm a beginner like i'm coming in with this type of like understanding and awareness so it's a really beautiful thing to 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 experience and to be aware of in a way that's not like i'm gonna leave in a way that it's like i'm gonna rise i'm gonna i'm gonna go to this place that i see people that are around me elevating and i'm gonna use that to help propel me forward 
And I appreciate you sharing about the difference of, well, what does being really look like? What does activating that look like? Because sometimes it can be really abstract. It can be very like out, out there, you know what I mean? And that can often get, you know, make it a little, make it a little bit challenging. So we talked a little bit about this already. Um, and I, you alluded to it in the comments that you were sharing. What was the thing that made you be like, I want to seek the support? Like I want to, and you and I had an initial conversation and then we did some work together and then we ended up doing more work together the following year. So for you, what was the, what was the thing within you that helped you see, this is the thing that I actually am calling for? Because oftentimes as leaders, it can be tricky to pinpoint that like you were talking about earlier. What was the, the thing that helped you see, hey, what I'm really desiring right now is support and the type of support that i'm desiring is the support that the honoris bring into the table what helped yeah. you? i think that uh it was recognizing oh it's me being a director it's me being a director oh, I was like, you disappeared. <laughs> okay, it was on purpose <laughs> sorry it was on purpose it was on purpose it was a purpose okay take two take two <laughs> So I think that for me, it was recognizing that I already knew that I was having trouble showing up as my full self and uh, in my full power, I think is a better way to even say that. And I couldn't figure out how to get past that block. And our mentor saw that too, and she could not help me. Um, in the same ways that you could, because it was a, we needed to have it broken down into tangible bite-sized steps that gave kind of the guidance, right? So I needed some doing for the being, if that makes sense, and really being able to understand how to reflect and untangle what was going on. And the reason I knew that I, needed your support is that I, I wasn't going to be able to figure it out on my own or if I was it was going to take me much longer and I wanted it like yesterday I wanted this solved I'd been banging my head kind of against this wall for way too long and uh didn't want to and wanted to get some support and uh it just felt like the way that you saw me and communicated with me as well as the ways that I saw you just showing up in the world. I was like, I think this is my person. Um, and I think that the, 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 the linchpin to that was probably two things. I don't know if I've even told you one of them. I can't remember. One was you challenged my idea about how things are supposed to be in a really powerful way. And what I mean by that is one of our conversations you stayed committed to the fact that we had a time scheduled, even though your life had shifted and you weren't in your seat where you are right now, ready to have a conversation. You were out in the world and like life had happened and life was lifing and you were still showing up for me. And at first I had like a judgment of like, like why, why this is not how these kind of conversations are supposed to be. But I was like, are you being served? Is she here with you? Like, does this matter? Like the, it, it really showed me that like, some of the things I thought mattered just really didn't if I was willing to let that go. So that was one thing. And I don't know if I ever told you that. So now I did. <laughs> I had some feelings about I was like, because you were like, hold on. And like you would pot like there, like like you were having to deal with like whatever the situation was around you because you were out in public um, because like things outside of your control were happening. Um, and even then you were able to tap into being present with me. Um, and I was like, did I get what I needed? Yes. Did she show up for me? Yes. That's a great, beautiful example that I think things need to be a certain way and they don't. So that was thing number one. Thing number two was that you were willing to call me out on that people don't. And I love that. Like, that's what I don't think people realize is I want that directness. And you are able to do that and sit with me through my prick prickliness. I don't even, is that a word? Sure. Um, but me being prickly about what you had to say. And I think that that was really beautiful example too, of like being able to trust you, being able to trust that you will speak to what you see. And stay there with me as I process what you saw. <laughs> um, 
I think uh, one of the things I remember, there were two, and the, the other one's not coming to me, but there were two examples where you had called me out on some stuff in one of those conversations. And one of them was just like victim mindset. And I would have told you, I am not a victim. I do not have victim mindset. I understand. I am in control. And there were so many examples, though, of where we all have that. We all like everybody, even people who have gone through this and and like have really had raised consciousness, they still have moments of victimhood and victim mindset. And you called me on some of that. And uh, I did not like it. I did not like what I saw, but I was like, then do something about it. And so it's a really long winded answer to say, that's how I decided that you were my person and I needed to work with you more. <laughs> it is, it's the perfect answer. It's the perfect answer, Cassandra, because it's an honest answer. And mm-hmm. I love that you talked about the victimhood, the victimhood mindset, because it's just, it's an energy and it's yeah. an energy that's a part of our being like it's it's embedded in the design like part of it is that it comes with it because we rely on each other we're we're co-creators so it's part of the system it, it's not a in the tech world it's not a it's not a it's not a bug it's a feature it's a feature it's not a bug it's about us learning to channel that energy into a different place and that's what i love about what you just shared because sometimes we feel like you shouldn't be here oh like i ain't no victim like i don't do that Sometimes we have that energy and then we see like, you know what? Yeah, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> I, mean, I think that like it, it it definitely was a trigger for, for me mm-hmm. to be told that I had even that kind of energy. Because I was like, no, I know people who are like that. I do not like that. That is not who I am. Mm-hmm. And then I saw the ways that I, I was like that. And um, sometimes still have to, to, to confront. And I think that... Um, and I, I don't know if this was the second thing, but this is what's coming up for me right now. So I, clearly it's what I'm supposed to share is that there was a situation I had shared with you in one of those first couple of conversations we had maybe in our like um, full day intensive, I think maybe where I had shared how I was really bothered and caught up in the cycle of, of, of um ruminating about a situation that didn't go the way I wanted with a client of mine Mm -hmm. Um, and that they had said some things that were just absolutely not true about me and it really hurt and I was really like kind of like Mm -hmm. cycle 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 and part of (laughs) you just like telling it how it is is you were like well what about that was true and like, I don't remember that, that those were your exact words, but that was definitely how I remember it. And I was like, none of it, none of it is true. And you're like, but is it? Because we co-create all of our situations. What, what in you did she see that created that for her? Mm. Like it is both true and untrue at the same time. Like it was true for her because of her experience and mine together. Mm-hmm. And so I went, oh. I don't like it, but okay, you're right. Um, And so I think that like, it it just helped me start shortening the cycle around Mm self-leadership and Mm self-ownership and being unattached and not getting caught up in the guilt and the shame of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that was was step one. Like I had to like deal with my feelings about you saying that. Mm -hmm. And like, there were so many layers and but i was willing to accept it and listen and um yeah i think that that was really important and i think that i remember that being a really clear clear uh piece of our beginning of our journey Mm. this is why i love this combos because first of all i always learn something new (laughs) you always drop something on me that is like i don't think i've told you this before but hey this thing happened this one time and it's I'm glad that you said that because that's really like the beginnings of us being able to show up to ourselves with a deep, with a different level of leadership is being able to be like, let me not get caught up in the messenger. Like, mm-hmm. what is it here for me to receive? And yeah. it speaks to your own leadership, Cassandra, because none of this can happen without you being willing to do it. 
none of it can happen without you being willing to be like, all right, I didn't like how she said that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, let me pause and let me see what's here for me and and let me allow myself to receive. Let me sit in that energy of co-creation in a different way. And this is why I applaud. And it's been such a joy to work with you because you, you do it. Like you are like, I may not know I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. And it's, it's happening in some capacity because that's just the nature of how you show up in the world. And and sometimes it's hard to see those things about ourselves, right? It's hard to be like, oh, I'm I'm the person I talk shit about. Okay, that's crazy. That was one of my bigger part. <laughs> yes. not, me. not me. Like, ew, not me. Right. And that's what helps us really in this journey and oh i'm just again again so juicy so juicy because i don't care with the bars for y'all i told you <laughs> so you join the society yeah and when well, you enter my world and then you choose to you choose to to join our our year-long mastermind mm-hmm. and then what happens talk to us through that journey of like i'm being triggered by this person and I'm choosing to go with the flow and partner with her in a longer capacity. And I enter the space. Talk to us about what happened next. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think that like even as I was feeling prickly about it all, I, I felt I was like, this is what I need. This is what I've been looking for. It's uncomfortable and I need it. Like, And so I recognized that. And um, woo, we can talk. Okay. So real, real, real. <laughs> Yeah, you're about to get some tea right now. Anybody, anytime somebody says, Woo, you're about to get some real tea <laughs> about myself. Like, I'm just gonna be really honest. Like, okay, so uh talk about co-creating a situation. So first steps to go into the society is you gotta fill out this really lengthy, really vulnerable, real like introspective uh intake form. And I took months. I was not allowed in until I got this form done and you would come and check on me and like do other things to try to help support me. But it was just like the boundary was fill this out or you don't get in. And the time is ticking on your container. So it's yours. And but what was beautiful is it was that and grace and love and don't spiral into shame and guilt. This is exactly what it it, is. you need right now clearly or it wouldn't be happening and fill out the form (laughs) and so like it took me forever to fill it out and 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 what that showed me is um one there was a lot to move through on that form like it's just really deep and uh i don't do things halfway and so i wasn't willing to just half-ass it or uh however you want to say that sorry um and like uh and just get answers in to hit submit and i just just it's not who that is not who i be like i cannot like i it, it pains me if if you ask a question i need to thoroughly answer it and so recognizing that was true and being like okay and that's who i am if you ask me to do a thing i'm gonna do a full out uh and also maybe nori help it be easier i don't know that's what i said i remember being like and i think even that i was trying to own both that like i was like i know i'm creating this difficulty for myself and here's some feedback about what would have supported me differently right <laughs> Um, and you were open to that. And like, again, that was that was another way that I built trust with you is that you were open to receiving that and didn't take it personally. Um, you're like, yep, that's helpful. And fill out the form. <laughs> and so I finally got it done. I finally was in. And uh, and I also remember, I think this is another important part of this, is you had told me about how as you have gone on your journey of supporting learning how to support people better and better that you've played around with the length and sat like the, the length of the the time and the container right and i was i i had this idea that i would i wanted to like quick get it done i wanted it done yesterday and so like i was gonna just like get it done and i didn't like it to i i really had to come at it slowly and I had to be willing to meet myself where I was at in ways that I 
I didn't used to give myself that kind of grace. Mm -hmm. Mm. Walk us through that part, Cassandra. Walk us, walk us through that part of giving yourself that level of grace. Because mm -hmm. that's something that as leaders, we be struggling with. We don't, we'd be like, we need to get things done as fast as possible. What was it like for you to see yourself showing up in a way that you didn't think you were going to show up <laughs> and holding space for yourself as you were moving through that? Like what was going, what, what paint us a picture? What was going on? Yeah, I think that a few things um, externally, uh, we have the container and the other folks who are in the society and they had been in longer, had been going on this journey. So they saw what was happening and they were willing to hold space for me. So I think that that's always like the first step, mm -hmm. both with what I do with my clients and what you do is that sometimes we have to hold space and belief in someone before they can for themselves. Mm -hmm. So that was externally what happened. Um, and then also it's just part of your process. You literally teach people how to have grace for themselves <laughs> and like recognize that like it doesn't actually serve what you think it's serving. It's serving something. It's just not serving what you think it's serving to be caught up in the guilt, the shame, the self-deprecation, the beating yourself up. It's actually mm -hmm. making the situation worse when you're doing that rather than moving through it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that like learning that because the way that you were able to break down what was happening and I go, oh, because once I see a pattern, I'm locked in. Like yeah. once I understand a structure or a system, and I think that that's where I think you saw that I was going to be able, once I locked in, I was going to be able to move quickly, but I just had to see it all first. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was off to the races, but it took me several months, even once I was in to like get the lay of the land. And I felt at sea, I kept coming with the, like, I feel behind, like, mm -hmm. I, can't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And like, you're, you're like, you're doing it right. Like you're doing the thing right now. You're fine. Like, <laughs> like you're exactly what you need to be doing right now. I'm like, but I was supposed to, there's no supposed to let it go. Like that was <laughs> done. <laughs> um, so I'm still working through the supposed to energy. Um, and I think that, that what really, unlocked was you being able to break down how, mm -hmm. how do we have grace for ourselves? How do we have compassion for mm -hmm. ourselves while not making excuses, that mm -hmm. distinction between I'm not letting myself off the hook. I'm just having grace for myself. And when I can have grace for myself without letting myself off the hook, that's when the magic really starts to happen where I didn't know how to I knew that I had to take accountability. And I think that that was the peak, a big thing that I'm realizing now. I'm just now, as we're, we're having this conversation, understanding that that was a missing link for me. I understood accountability, but I didn't understand accountability without a lot of self shame. Um, yeah. So I think that once I learned <laughs> how to have accountability for what was going on and ownership of what was going on without the stuff that wasn't really serving me. Um, it really is what kind of shifted things for me. And I think that seeing other people in the container, being able to move through those things, have those conversations, not feel alone in those kinds of things, see them further along in their journey. Um, and also seeing you show up as the leader of the container and and being transparent and vulnerable to be like, and I'm still moving through these things. And this is what happened to me this week around this. And this is what happened, like, and this is how I'm dealing with it. You were using your life in real time, which again, continued to build trust that yes, you are a beautiful mentor of this and you're also leading yourself through it every day. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense, Cassandra. And you know, thank you for being really vulnerable about this and transparent. Like, this is really what self leadership looks like, y'all. It's being willing to showcase this part of it because this is the part that we tend to keep hidden. This is why making this decision is so transformational because we we are letting y'all in. Like, we're letting you into like what is really like to go through this process and build this 
six figure, seven figure, eight figure brands, like companies, like this is what it takes. It's this type of unearthing. And I appreciate you being transparent about it, Cassandra. I appreciate, I'm grateful that you're, you are choosing to show up in that way because these are very like challenging things to talk about. And there is so much shame associated with success. Y'all be surprised how much shame there is associated with success, how much make yourself feel bad about it energy is linked to the idea of success mm -hmm. and what you're talking about cassandra it's like i have goosebumps right now i could I, I could start crying at any moment that's something else about me i cry everywhere anywhere y'all already if you if you're my space you see me cry at least once <laughs> and, and it's because it's just so so empowering so shifting like what you've done what you've done you have shifted the entire lineage of your family and not only your family the family is a people anybody that comes into contact with you is that ripple effect is that like igniting a chain reaction of the flame of others and this is from the heart i'm not even talking about what you do with your magic around systems and your gifts with your you know mind i'm talking about your heart and i'm just really grateful for you to be willing to do that and to show up in that way because let me tell y'all something. Working with me is not fucking triggering. I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> You're going to be triggered as fuck when you come over here. So if that's something that you are avoiding, don't come over here because you're going to be massively triggered working with me because you're there to learn to journey through those triggers. And, and what I appreciate about what Cassandra said, and I hope y'all wrote it down, was releasing that shame around her joy and her success and the things that brought her, like, like let her up helped her journey it more joyfully like yeah. we got that shame which you wanted to share Cassandra go ahead and I was just gonna say I think that that's a really good distinction that you made even clearer than I just did of like I was talking about shame and guilt about things that I felt like I was doing wrong like mm -hmm. mistakes as opposed to successes but it was on both ends and that's what was really really holding me back is that I had guilt and shame and frustration around and, and, and which feeds into like lack of self-trust um, around mistakes. But I also was having it on the success side. Like there was so much going on that I wouldn't allow myself to fully be successful mm -hmm. because there was a story happening about what people would think, what people would feel. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to think I think I'm better than I don't want think people to think, uh, you know, that I am money hungry or whatever, whatever, whatever story was going on, um, both of those things and more. Um, and so I would diminish my success and I would shrink mm -hmm. myself um, and it wasn't serving me or the people who I meant to serve. And mm -hmm. when I was showing up that way, my people couldn't see me. Mm -hmm. And I think that like that is also where our journeys unfold exactly like they're supposed to in the sense that our shared mentor, one of her gifts is seeing people's strengths and abilities and their power and, and letting them own she or encouraging people to own that power and step fully into it. Mm -hmm. Your gift is showing people how. Mm -hmm. that like I got to the point in that journey that I was like yes this I, I understand the problem mm -hmm. I understand how it needs to shift mm -hmm. I don't know how to shift it because I didn't know what the underlying causes were and so I kept trying to fix something hmm how do I say hmm I'll say it this way a lot of times when I work with clients, I feel bad because they've been given, like the metaphor I use is they've been given a car mm -hmm. and, like, and been told, well, you have a car, so you know how to build one. Mm -hmm. And they have to deconstruct and try to figure out mm -hmm. from a built car how to have a built car, right? And I think that like, that's where I was metaphorically, was that I saw people being, Mm -hmm. and their power 
And I understood that that's what I desired. And I had some of the knowledge of how to get there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have all the tools or know how. And so I didn't know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And so I needed that support and that clarity um, and those tools and guidance. And that's that's really what you unlocked for me is, mm -hmm. is understanding the how of being in your full power. Mm -hmm. Um, and great with all the ways that I would want that, right? Because that was um, mm -hmm. even now, I have to remind myself. Um, one, I'm not anywhere, like, I'm just a little bit further on my journey than I was, right? There's so much growth. I need a tip. Grow. Sorry, friends. <laughs> Carry yourself, <laughs> Um, but like recognizing that I I had an idea of if I was going to be in my full mm -hmm. and show up that way, that I still needed to make sure that all of my kindness and my love and my goofiness and my silliness and my playfulness and all of that was tied up in it. And like, I think that what I understand now that I struggled with at the beginning was that if I just trusted myself, <laughs> that that was just going to naturally happen because that's who I be. Like, <laughs> um, and so I think that like that was the really beautiful outcome was that like learning to trust that all of the things we desire to be will happen if I trust myself. <laughs> that's so goofy to know about it. It's, it's real though. It's real. That's how it is. And it sounds like cliche and almost like duh like but when you start to look deeper in what that means. And when you start to dive in on, and remove those layers that are chilling in our subconscious, you start yeah. to see that the being part is easy. It's the stuff around it mm -hmm. that makes it challenging. Mm -hmm. Like the, the flower is blooming, but it's like there's all these things around it that keep us from seeing that it is blooming and that it is bright and it is beautiful and then we begin to remove all those things through grace and through compassion and through joy and through fun and suddenly we see like oh okay the flower been there the whole time hey flower and the flower is you you are the flower you're the flower that blooms the entire time yeah well and this one is a better analogy really than even the car so i'm gonna let that one go and replace it with this one well thank it both in this moment and forevermore. I think that what it is actually more like is a little kid who is really drawn to something that they want to be career wise when they grow up and they have a natural talent or skill for it. Like they just already feel drawn, but they haven't necessarily learned all the skills of how to do that thing yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they look at people who are already doing those things. Like, let's say an astronaut and we see like, and then they're playing astronaut. And like on some level you go, oh yeah, that's a little astronaut. And mm -hmm. some level you go, I don't believe it. <laughs> you're, you're not fully there yet, right? And because you don't have all the tools to fully show up as an astronaut yet, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, there was a bit of that where we do, and, and the, it's not even necessarily, again, I'm not gonna judge it, it's part of some of the process is that it's great to look to examples of people who are already there and learn a little bit of posture. I don't know that posturing is quite the right word because I think there might be some negative connotation with that, but a little bit of like, how do I try on that suit? How do yeah. I like feel that? And mm -hmm. whoo, this will connect us to something specific you did for me. Um, I remember you asking me, I don't remember exactly. I'll just share the outcome because I don't remember all the backstory. Um, but basically, you challenged again my need, like my things about how it should be um, mm -hmm. around flying and how I am serious. I think I've told you this one before, but yeah, um, like I really need to be comfortable on an airplane. Like I deeply like mm -hmm. flying's already uncomfortable for me. So like how I dress, like I used to be like, just like, not sweatpants, but like the coziest clothes you could possibly imagine. Um, 
that isn't pajamas, but like still I look pretty like cozy. Um, like hoodie was my uniform for a mm -hmm. flight, right? And and you had challenged about like show up as the person that you desire to be. And you say it even better than that. I don't remember your exact phrasing, but like show up as your iconic self. Mm -hmm. um, what would your what would your iconic self do or be? And I was like, but I can't do that because I'll be cold and uncomfortable. And you're like, okay, like, and you challenge that. And like, and it made me decide to figure out how to marry all of that. Like, how do I show up looking like I belong in first class and cozy and comfy? Like, and then I did yeah. it. And I had fun yeah. doing it. I remember, like, I know I've told you that because I go back to that story a lot because I'm like, that was just a moment. And I have dressed differently for flights ever since then. Like, ever since then. And Nice. Maybe well better know I'm still cozy and warm. I still have my lap blanket, like, but I also realized that I could embody this iconic yeah. self that also honored what I felt like I needed. It wasn't an either or. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where we sometimes get stuck yeah. is that we get stuck in what we believe we think we need mm -hmm. or how things should be um, or an excuse about why it can't be. For me, my excuse was, well, I have to sacrifice comfort and warmth. No, I could look fabulous and be comfortable and warm. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Where's my fan at, y'all? I, I wish my fan was here. Y'all know I share office with JP, so he be moving my things around. Here it goes. That's it. That's it. She's bringing the fan out because this is a, this is this is the type of trust we're talking about. It's not like out there trust. It's I'm gonna fly in first class and I'm gonna look good and I'm gonna be comfortable the entire time. It's not an either or. And I love that you framed it exactly like that, Cassandra, because sometimes people think it is. They're like, oh, I, I can't, I can't have it. I can't have both things. It's like one thing or the other. And it's just that's just not true. It's just mm -hmm. literally not true. And this is the the marrying, the integrating that occurs when you're able to move beyond those other blocks. Yeah. You're able to like see yourself from this perspective. I want us to talk a little bit about the joy. What has been the joy in all of this? We've talked, we've alluded into it. And I want to give you a moment to sit with what has been some of the most joyful things you've allowed yourself to step into as being part mm -hmm. of the society and stepping into your next season. We've talked a, quite a bit about some things already, but I know that there are a lot more joy for you as you're making your your as you're setting the tone for your next year. So I'm gonna give you a second to do that. While Cassandra thinks about that, I'm gonna take off screen. I'm gonna talk to those of you that already, what's up? I know you want some of this. There is no way that you sit in here and you're hearing this transformation from Cassandra. You're listening to her in those aha moments that you are not sitting here being like, why am I not in the self to society? Like, why am I not up in here getting me some of this icon energy? Because this is exactly what's possible for you. You're not going to be in a place where I'm going to tell you to be, Yanori. No, you're going to be in a place where I'm going to support you in unleashing that version of you that keeps on putting up the vision board. The vision of you that keeps on seeing all what's possible for you. And that comes from within. Inner peace is an inside job. Self-trust is an inside job. And when you go inside... It's important to have the right conditions so that you can do it with ease and with flow and with joy and compassion because it is fucking triggering. And what I'm offering to you is an opportunity to do that and to do it in a space that is full of love, full of kindness, full of gentleness. Because you see me out here, this is the energy I bring to the table. So I want to invite you to apply for an authenticity audit. 45 minutes, you and I, we're going to talk about where you are. We're going to talk about what it takes to show up as the most authentic version of yourself. Bring in everything. Bring in all the, like, the pickleness, like Cassandra says, all the quirkiness, all the challenges, everything, the fun, the discomfort, everything gets to be here. It's all about you. It's all about you being able to journey it and do it with ease, enjoying the journey as much as the destination. And I want that for you. So join me for an authenticity audit. Apply for one of them. There are about three, maybe two left this week, I think. So hurry up. I'm going to say hurry up. I don't even talk like that. Who says that? Hurry up. 
Click on the link, book the session, talk to your girl. You know the vibes. I want to co-create magic with you. I want to make sure that you are also trusting your intuition, that you are listening to your inner voice, that you feel confident in yourself enough to pause in between the video, correct what you want to say, and say it in the way that feels aligned in that moment. That's really what authenticity and self-trust looks like, and I want that for you. So click on that link. Let's co-create magic in your life, and let's bring back Cassandra. Director moment. Ooh, yes. I just love when it like, pings. <laughs> it's a little thing. Because I'm right. talking about what has been joyful for you. What has been, what have been some of the most joyful things that you have allowed yourself to experience as yeah. a result of this transformation? Man, I think that there's so many. I, I just, I think that recognizing that I, I sometimes, because I am so goal oriented, um and 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 want to really create massive positive change in the world with the work that i'm doing and i want to do it with high quality that i will sometimes get too serious um and let that like that seriousness actually clouds who i actually am which is quite playful and curious and um so i think that like just being able to tap more and more into that playfulness and remembering how to do that. Like I remember there was a session that we did together that we explored um, just what, once I said, okay, I need to be playful. I need to um, have more of that joy. You're like, okay, what makes you feel that way? And then uh, I think one of the things I shared was like board games and uh, uh, fantasy novels. And you're like, okay, so what book are you reading then? And then like the other thing that you helped like curb immediately. And you're like, so you're going to read like two pages a week. Like the, the, like, it was just like such a like low bar because I think that that was the thing that I was always setting these really high bars and then being mad at myself for not doing it. Right. Um, and I will say that like to get to your answer, I think, cause you're looking for more like specific things that have happened in my life this year. Um, so I've, 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 made more money than I've ever made. I have um, taken more time off. I traveled for 12 weeks this year. Um, I Three and a half weeks of that was international. Um, I left the country for a whole three and a half weeks. I've never done anything like that before. That's the longest international trip I've ever taken. And I didn't work in my business at all while I was gone. I have a team that was able to take care of everything. I worked on my business for part of that because part of that was vacation. Part of that was a business retreat. So I was like working on the business, but I had that spaciousness to go isolate myself, retreat and do that work. Right. Um, let's see what else. Like I, I just so much like just uh, uh, being able to take care of people the way that I desire to take care of them. Um, and some of that is like showing up for them when they uh, weren't expecting it, but it delighted them. Like whether it was being able to change plans last minute to go to lunch or to um, go to travel to see them or uh, on a sadder side, like somebody had a death and like being in the family or in their life and being able to like full stop for that. Um, and that actually brings me joy and ease like that being able to be that person, um, be uh, joy and ease, like coming from being able to grow my business enough to hire more people. And, and I don't even think I told you this yet. Maybe I did. Um, I just brought on two more part-time, uh, team members. And the beautiful part is one of my team members, I, who has been with me for a couple of years now, um, just got i just promoted her and she is managing our new team members she's fully capable of that and one of the things that was really beautiful is that i was traveling again a couple weeks ago and that's when they were onboarding and i was like i've never in either of my businesses that i've had fully let someone else onboard new team members like ever like i have had help with that but never have i ever been completely hands off and my team member like she handled it all like a rock star and like is managing all of that and so that ease and joy of release and trust not only in myself but in others um because i recognize and i think that that's like one of the things that helped me move quickly once i had the aha was that where i was <laughs> 
giving myself permission to be hard on myself because I wasn't like that with others, I thought, is that I actually was showing up that way more with others than I thought, like how you act versus how you think you act. And recognizing that the only way that I was going to be able to have the level of grace, love, compassion, support, all of the things I wanted to be for other people, I had to do that for myself first. Like literally, I was not going to be able to show up to that level if I didn't do my own inner work. So I actually did some of my own inner work because I care so much about others. I was like, I got to take care of people better, which means I got to take care of myself better. Um, and so, and I think a lot of times when people say that, like, don't pour for an empty cup, we say really surface level about self-care where like, you need to sleep, you need to eat right. And those things are important. Like, I'm not trying to diminish that, but it's also like this deep inner work of self-care too. And I think that that's what gets missed. And I also think that like business owners don't see always why this is a direct correlation to their business, to their money, to their success, because they're like, oh, that's personal work. Like that's personal development. No, this is life everything. Like, and I knew, I knew I was going in working with you. And I think that that might've been what, what's a little bit different too, is that like, I knew it was a business investment. I knew that like, it was going to shift how I was showing up in my business. Um, so I've always seen this as an investment in my business. Now I see it's an investment in my whole self. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's what takes you there. It's what takes you there. And honestly, you're so spot on. Like it's more than the working out. It's more than the eating well. And that is extremely important as well. It's part of the system. It's also and it's also looking at these things about ourselves and holding that space. And that's one thing I love about working with you is that you're willing to hold that space, Cassandra, because it is, it can be, it, is, it, gets, it gets real. It gets really fucking real. I'm not going to lie. So it's important to be able to, to do that. We're getting ready to wrap, y'all. I can't, every time I'm, I say that in one of these calls, I'm like, has it really been that long? Or like, I feel like I just got here. So we're getting, getting ready, we're going to get ready to wrap. So I have a few more questions for Cassandra that, you know, would support everybody watching and that honestly will also support her and my me when we watch this back and we look at look at look look at where we were look at what we were discussing look at the discussions that we were having how much we've grown to have these conversations and how much more we will grow because of these conversations so Cassandra I want you to share um give us this I've been asking the members of the society this question when they when they come on here you tell us a little bit about how has been how has being a member of the society, the subject society, helped you as a partner with your spouse? Like, well, how has it really changed you as like a partner, I guess a businesswoman, and in, as a partner in your business or in your relationships or friendships? Like, how has it shifted you in, that area, in those areas? Yeah, I think that it helped close a lot of what I perceived as either ors. Um, and realizing that it didn't have to be that I either was, uh, for example, um, showing up and spending a lot of time and pouring too much of myself into something that I didn't ha actually have the capacity for or completely cutting that off, right? Um, I think that it also looked like being willing to be more accountable for my own stuff and being able to still have more grace it, it, it for others uh and i think that <sighs> ways that i think that it has shifted m with my relationships it just across the board i think that like um i am more willing to sit with someone's discomfort uh and not make that my fault or my problem and still have love and grace for the fact that they're uncomfortable. Um, and I think that that serves me in my romantic relationships, that serves me in, uh, you know, in my marriage and, and my friendships um, and being able to speak to that and and be more like you in the fact that I one of my gifts is being able to be direct. But I would used to couch that a lot more or be afraid of that more and or own it and then um, carry that weight with me, which which was even more like I would I would have the conversation, but then I made it all my my problem, right? 
And I think that like that has helped the people around me do the same, right? I'm leading by example, which has always been a cornerstone of how I want to show up as a leader. Leaders go first, lead by example. Um, and so I have to be open. I have to be vulnerable. I have to be direct and I have to be, I don't have to, I hear all the have tos. It's none of us have to, I get to, I choose to, um, I could be any kind of leader I want to be, but instead I choose to be the kind of person who leads by example and allows that to ripple out. Um, and so I think that like, I have better communication with my partners, I have better communication with everybody. Um, and that's because I'm not diminishing or couching who I am as much. Um, and I trust who I am and how I'm showing up a lot more. Um, and I'm able to, like, we talk a lot about collapsing time, I think in business and in certain circles of business, right? Like move quicker, make things happen faster. And I think that like what I've recognized is the ability to collapse time around the self-reflection um, and getting to a better, healthier place. Like, it's just, I have all the tools now from working with you and being in the society that I can do the thing I already knew to do, but understand how I was siloing that and didn't, I wasn't carrying some of those skills over into my personal life. Um, and when I do that, I get to have more fun and joy and playful and, and also still own that things are hard sometimes and things are not the way that we want and that we can find joy in that. I think that that's the thing that we hadn't touched on yet that like matters so much is that it's not joy or discomfort. It is I can choose joy and ease in anything. And it's how I choose to show up. Yes, what a beautiful way of, of bringing that. If you can choose joy through the discomfort because it's it's gonna be here, y'all. Y'all gonna be uncomfortable. Let's just be real with that. That's not gonna go anywhere. The human is an uncomfortable experience. It's part of the process. Cassandra, fun question for you. What I think is fun anyway. <laughs> what would you tell? What, what what message would you tell the version of yourself that made the decision to to go deeper into this self work into and to look at yourself from this different angle? What message would you leave that version of yourself that was like, okay, we're going to do this? What would you tell her? Oh gosh, what would I say? My gosh, everything that's coming to mind is so cliche. Like, trust the process. Like, you're you're making the right choice. Uh, yeah, I I think that maybe I would say broken. You're already enough. And it's not that you're missing something. It's just that you need to connect some dots that aren't connected yet. And you're on your way. I think that's what I would say. Mm. I felt that. I felt that. Yeah. What would you tell the version of yourself from your future? What note are you leaving her? What are, what are you leaving future Cassandra, future mm -hmm. world light? Light to the world, what are you sharing with her? I'm already her and that I'm choosing every day to embody that more and continue to do the inner work that removes the spaces where it is harder for me to show up as her, but that I'm committed to continuing to do the work and I understand that it's a journey and not a destination. Um, and that, yeah, I think that's it. I think that like, I already am my iconic self. I'm just becoming more and more of her every day. Period. Period. 
Period. I already am my iconic self. I'm just becoming more of her every day. That's that's the gift, y'all. You're ready. You're ready that person. It's mm -hmm. about letting that person shine, that version of you expand into all areas of your life. And it's such a joy to watch you do this mm -hmm. and, and to be a be a part of it, be a part of your story in this way. It's it's really beautiful and it's an honor that I certainly um, do not take lightly. The last question I have for you, Cassandra, to close us out, it's what would you tell the person that's considering joining the Self-Just Society or entering your Norris world that's like, maybe I'm going to apply for one of those authenticity audits. I don't know. Like, what would you share with that person? Yeah. I think that I would say that Nori what I can speak to for myself and what I've seen her do with other people in the society is help clear roadblocks of everything that you may desire to create by giving you the tools to get there. And if you are um, trying to sort that out, um, she's a beautiful guide and I'm so grateful for her guidance. Um, and I, I think that for somebody who's considering or maybe on the fence of like, do the difficult work, like the, the, the I think the quote is like, the scariest place to be uh, is exactly where you are a year from now. And like, ask yourself, like if, if from a year from now, you're where you are, what have you missed out on? What is, what is the opportunity loss? Um, what's that cost you? Um, and recognize that you can collapse time when you get help. And I say that to everybody, like it's okay to get help. Not only is it okay, it's ideal. Like we are meant to be in community and all of us have different gifts who um, we're con as we're contributing those to our community around us. Um, so yeah, trust that Nori can help you unlock those things. Um, or at least have a conversation and see if she's your person. Like, I think that that's the thing that holds us back sometimes is taking that first step. And if you're already struggling with self-trust, like, I mean, maybe just trust me and talk to her. <laughs> that was just being a little goofy, but yeah. Sarna, thank you so much for being so transparent and, and being so open with the people and just letting people in y'all. This is really what it's like. This is what it's like. And when you know what it's like, you can show up more authentically and you can show up more joyfully to yourself when those moments that you you show up out of alignment. Something is coming up for me. I was going to wrap us, but this is coming up. So I'm just going to ask it. Giving yourself a rating, because I asked Jackie mm -hmm. actually on one of our other calls, where would you place your, your, your self-trust when you started working with us, with me? And, and where do you put it now? On a scale of one to 10, there you go, I, I know parameters. One, on a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, where would you place your self-trust when we started working together and where is it now? It's an interesting question because I think that had I rated myself at the beginning, uh, I may have given myself a higher number, like reflecting at the beginning. And I think that that was the like, uh, how you act versus how you think you act um, or how you desire to be. Um, and so I think that like, I think the, the truest answer is that part of my biggest problem was the wavering, right? There were moments that I was like, fully confident um and then there were moments that like i needed somebody to co-sign every decision <laughs> um and so i think that like probably if i'm honest that probably averages out to like a three or four <laughs> um it's probably where i started um and i i probably live at an average of an eight now, like seven or eight, like, and I only say that to say, like, I see the room for growth. Like, I never want to be the person who is saying I'm a 10, like, no, then that like, I'm de delusional about, again, how am I actually acting? Um, I think that that's tricky too. Like, isn't it Oprah who like, they ask like, 
what uh, what's your scale one to 10 of like your potential and you reaching your potential right now. And she gave herself like a four. And I was like, if Oprah is giving herself a four, we all need to be evaluating our numbers. Like <laughs> or we are rating ourselves too high. So I think that that's what always gives me pause about like about rating. But yeah, I think that the simple answer is probably like a three to like a seven or eight. <laughs> Listen, Oprah has her thing going on too. You know, she's a, a world, she's, she calls herself a world renowned people pleaser, recovering people pleaser. So that energy, everybody experiences it at every level. So if Oprah giving herself a four, that don't mean that you got to check your numbers. That means Oprah got to check her numbers. Because she oh. is Oprah. She is <laughs> Oprah. What is, what is, what is a four? Because obviously it's not the, the wealth, right? So this is even as we, as we look at leaders and leaders ourselves, like, when we are in an icon energy room, we're like, yo, Oprah, why are you at a four, babes? What's going on underneath the surface that got you at a four? Because you could easily be wherever you want to be, right? So, but I do appreciate that observation around it because ratings are always interesting. It's more like a quick glance for you to yeah. like reflect and all and, and, and see it for yourself. Like that's, that's, why I, that's why I find them quirky. It's like, yeah, where, where would I put myself at versus like, oh, it's wrong being there. So well, I think it's Oprah too. I think it's that like the question I think that she was asked was about knowing her potential. And maybe mm -hmm. it's just that she's such an icon that she is what? she's still delivering at a four. I'm like, I need a four energy. And when you are tapped in, you don't need to go crazy with it. You don't need to, you don't need to do all of that. And that's what Auntie Oprah be knowing the vibes. Oh, what a great way to end this convo. And that's a huge level of progress in 12 months. Um, or a little bit over twelve months to 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 experience because now you, that's your new found, your new baseline. We we talked a lot about baselines in the society. Mm -hmm. Now this is your baseline. This is the place that you're you're moving from. So even in the moments where you may waver, which because that's gonna happen, we gonna waver. I waver. Everybody wavers. Oprah wavers. In those moments, now you know, like okay, well, you know, I'm wavering from a position of a seven or an eight, which is a different wavering from a position of a four or a three or a two. So, mm -hmm. I just celebrate you for your growth. I celebrate you for giving me space to be your mentor and to and, and for your trust because the work of the heart is not for the lighthearted and it's not something that I know personally. I'm just giving out to everybody, right? Like we got to be really gentle with our heart because there's quite a lot involved in it. So it's really beautiful to watch you and, and to, and to be able to support you and to get to share this with the people. And I can't wait for you to watch this a year from now and just cackle in at your joy <laughs> and your growth from now. So yeah, we'll go, we'll go celebrate and uh, in our big iconic yeah, yeah. energy, like a year from now and be like, Oh, there we are even more <laughs> iconic than we were before. And you know what Cassandra didn't say that I'm going to say for her right now before she leaves? She recently got an award called the Power Player of the Year Award. And this is an award from a container her and I used to be a part of, I used to be a part of, we used to share in comment. And I just want to celebrate her, y'all. Like, if you're watching this right now, make sure you drop her a heart or a sunflower in the comments. Just celebrate her because that award is not about how much money we make. I actually got that award last year. And it's not about how much money we make, which we know that we can do because we can make money. We can make ourselves work. It's about who we be. And here she was a year ago being like, how do I be who I be? And here she is winning this award for being who she be. What a fucking full circle moment. Congratulations, Cassandra. And if you haven't sat in that, I hope that today you take a few minutes to sit in that because you know how you be. You know how you be so well that you got a whole fucking award for it. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, y'all. See you next time. Take care of yourselves. My name is Janori Pounsel. I am the guiding light and spiritual teacher to icons, intuitive leaders that are trusting themselves, living joyfully, peacefully, and overflowing with the type of love that can only come from doing the inner work. And I'm here to make sure that you all see things clearly. We'll see you in the next video. Hasta luego.